What's up guys, Nate here. This is the God Binder. This is a binder that I've kind of made over the years, um, just kind of slowly putting cards in. They are some of the cards that I've had for the longest amount of time. This binder had a couple holes that I was missing as far as like Sky Ridge Crystal cards, but that in itself isn't much of a spoiler because there are some awesome things in here aside from some crystal cards. This binder, I kind of had this idea of, you know, I wanted the biggest things in one binder. What would it be like if I had some of the biggest things in a hobby in a binder? And now with the craziness going on, I'm slowly starting to realize that this binder just needs to be graded. It's almost getting silly not to grade it at this point. So I wanted to show it off in all of its glory one more time, one final time here for you guys. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's jump into it. This card here is a base set Charizard, first edition, Shadowless. Let's go ahead and just show this guy off. Let's get it out of the way. I initially wanted to show this guy off at the very end, but this is like one of my childhood cards here. This card has been the Charizard that's been with me the longest. Out of all the first edition Shadowless Charizards I have, this is the one I decided to keep. And over my lifetime, I've had about, uh, what was it, like five or six first edition base set Charizards, including an 8.5, that should have been a nine, but still an 8.5 nowadays, that is pretty insane. Um, and I just, have that sentimental value to this one just because it's been with me for a very long time and how I got it is actually a story for another video so if you're interested in why I kept this one over the others why I'm so attached to this one why I've had this one the longest be sure to subscribe and check out that video we'll set that off to the side here let's bring the binder over and actually, let's kind of set this guy off to the side because we're going to be flipping a lot of pages. We flip it open here. We have a 100% complete first edition Shadowless base set. Now, you guys been around, you know all of the base set. If it's first edition English, it's going to be Shadowless. Um, I've been trying to do some more videos to kind of help out newer collectors here, but that's... It's not why we're here. We're here to look at these cards. So let's go ahead and take a look. If you know what you're looking at, I mean, you just know what you're looking at. This is just so special to me to have a complete first edition ungraded base set. I've always been one to prefer uh, binder collections over graded. But like I said, now it's just kind of getting to that point where some of these cards, Charmander, Pikachu... Red Cheeks Pikachu and Yellow Cheeks Pikachu both. I mean, these cards are getting to be insane on them, like on their own, it's basically standalone. So this will probably be one of the last things I ever grade, but I am grading a lot of things now, so I'll probably be looking at this in the near future. Moving on, we have Jungle Set. We have a complete first edition Jungle Set here as well. You can kind of get the theme. Yeah, we're going to see Fossil later on too. We're going to see a complete first edition Fossil set because between base, jungle, and Fossil, the cards, the Pokemon, I mean, it makes up the original 150 Pokemon. You can't go wrong with base, jungle, Fossil. Even these guys, I mean, the common Eevee, the common Pikachu, these guys are just getting to be insane in price now. Here we have the first edition fossil set. Some of these cards are actually like pretty damn near mint condition. And that's another thing. I have some cards in here that are potentially nines and tens, which is, I know like really crazy to some people. Why aren't you going I'll have to get those guys graded, but I mean, if you haven't seen the video where I cracked out PSA cases, I actually cracked out a lot of PSA cases just to fill this binder. So I was cracking out crystal cards, 
even PSA 9s and yeah, call me crazy, but I just love a binder collection. That's what it's all about. Now, after this page, that concludes uh, first edition base jungle and fossil. So now we are getting into some of the secret rare cards. And first up is actually the Red Cheeks E3 Pikachu. You can tell this is an E3 Pikachu because it has an E3 stamp on there. This was given pretty much almost like a pre-release. I call it the base set pre-release because we never had like an official pre-release. As you notice, these next four cards after the Pikachu are actually stamped pre-release. They were given out before the set was released at pre-release events. These Pikachus, however, these were at the uh, E3 Expo um, over in California. The yellow one, I believe, was given in a magazine, but the red cheeks, I think it was given at the event itself. So there's kind of a unique story behind that. Maybe I'll touch on that in another video, but the red cheeks Pikachu from base set, it was kind of a error because the Pokemon or Wizards of the Coast at the time you know, they thought that it was an error in the artwork because Pikachu's cheeks are red, but that's actually how the artist wanted it because he's using like an electrical attack there. So this was weird to be just right in that timeline where the red cheeks Pikachu was considered the real Pikachu or the non air Here we have Clefable pre-release. I'll go ahead and take this out. It's kind of hard to see the pre-release on this one compared to the other ones, but you can see pre-release right there at the bottom right of the picture. This one does have surface scratching on it and a little edge wear on the back. So there are some cards, you know, there's nothing in here that's really lower than a PSA 5. Let me kind of scoot this over again. So yeah, same thing over here. We got pre-release Aerodactyl, pre-release Dark Gyarados, and Misty Seedra. Now starting with this Raichu. We're getting into Wizards of the Coast secret rares. So aside from the sets, the pre-releases, I started to collect the secret rares. Now these are not first edition. If I did get first edition of these, these were ones I likely graded and sent off. But um, yeah, Dark Raichu was the first secret rare. The numbering on the bottom is 63 out of 62, as well as all these other cards are kind of like hidden numbers given the secret rare name. So we have Magikarp and Gyarados from Neo Revelation, I believe. On the right side here, we have Neo Destiny Hollows. Now these are the ones people really remember. Look at this Charizard. I mean, this Charizard alone, there's enough reason to get graded. I think this one has a spot. Yeah, this one has like a weird spot on the bottom. But still, awesome card. Those cards nowadays bring a pretty penny as well as most things in this binder. And there's actually only eight shining cards in Neo Destiny. But this is actually a Koro Koro Shining Mew from Japan released in the Japanese Koro Koro magazine. Now I've included this one because I'm kind of OCD and it makes a makes for a perfect placeholder to be the last shiny card because I consider this one pretty much being in that shiny family. And this is one of my favorite cards of all time. I probably really need to get this card graded because I mean, just look at this thing. This card is ridiculous. Okay, moving on, let's go ahead and swap the page and bam, you're hit with the crystal cards. These are crystal cards that were released in Aquapolis. You had Kingdra, Lugia, and Nidoking. These were considered secret rare cards and kind of on the same level as those Neo Shinings. Um, these six down here were from the Sky Ridge set, one of the most sought after Wizards of the Coast set, being the very last set that Wizards of the Coast produced for Pokemon. And the numbers on the set are pretty dismal. I mean, this set is really rare in itself, being the last Pokemon set. Uh, a lot of people are chasing after the Charizard card, of course. That guy, if it doesn't have a crease on it, I mean, you're looking at a $1,000 card easily. Um, you definitely want to do your research if you have one of those guys. Uh, that guy can bring you quite the premium nowadays. Now, moving on over here, 
These are more secret rare cards, but these are the only secret rare cards and the only cards in this binder that are not from the Wizards of the Coast era. These are the Gold Star cards. You can tell because of the Gold Star and the name. Rayquaza is one of the bigger ones. I really need to get these guys graded. These might actually be something I would consider selling. Um, ever since I got back into the hobby, I don't know what it was with the Gold Star. So I don't know what really brought on that Gold Star craze. Or maybe there was a Gold Star craze happening when I came back into the hobby. But these cards, man... The artwork is so cool. They kind of extend out of the border. It will be hard for me to sell these cards, but I mean, if it comes down to it, these would be the first things I sold out of the binder because these guys have just won me over in so many ways and I got these at such a good price. Which I got a lot of this stuff at a good price. Kind of bringing down my... Uh, my binder over here because I don't want to shine away from this guy. This guy is probably one of the most underrated Charizard cards of all time. Not to mention that it was a gold star, but it was in an era, which this is true with a lot of these gold stars. A lot of the gold star cards were in an era or in a set that was released when Pokemon just wasn't really firing on all cylinders. A lot of the original people who collected, like many of us, just kind of got out of the hobby and didn't really get back in until after this. So this was really like a lost era. And some of these cards, even if it wasn't a rare era, these put some cards today to shame as far as rarity goes. You're not even guaranteed like a gold star in a box, I believe it was, and you had multiple options like... All the three dogs here, of course, were in the same set. I don't think there was a single set where it only had like one gold star card. I think the Mew was included in the Charizard set. But just something like that. These two down here, Espeon, Umbreon, those guys bring a pretty penny by themselves. They were the only non-holo versions. However, they did have holo versions in Japan through a point system. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on those a little bit later. Kind of the fan club point system. But yeah, guys, just the gold stars. They're just firing on all cylinders. Here we have jungle again. But if you notice, there is no jungle symbol on any of these cards. These are an entire set of no symbol jungle hollows. These were printed without the jungle symbol as an air. This is pretty well known throughout the community. Um... I believe these cards are pretty underrated. I mean, they are basically a proven air at this point and definitely look cool. They look like base set cards, but without the jungle symbol there, that's the only way you can tell. I mean, you just have to know that these cards are from jungle in order to tell. So all 16, um, or what is it? I don't, I don't know how many there were. But 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 or 16, all the hollows. So yeah, all the hollows in Jungle Set actually had this. Um, so yeah, there they all are. Moving on to these two cards. These are the last two cards in the binder. These guys are actually misprints. So there is a little empty space in the back of this binder um, that I want to fill up. It's pretty much just going to be misprints and anything that I see as an air that's not well known or not documented. This wiggly tough, if you take a look at it, you can notice like all of the lettering and stuff is like just kind of off. It looks almost like fuzzy. That's because the black ink layer was actually printed twice. Not really noticeable on the back, but you can just kind of tell by the wording. So that's pretty cool in itself. And this Blaine's Arcanine has like a weird ink splotch. Now what I think happened with this one, I think there was like a little water a droplet or something in the red ink so it just kind of made it like bleed right there and there's some people who will actually take acetone and you can actually take this ink layer off but when you do that you can't like I don't know you can't not smudge the black layer as you can see like this line here it is perfectly intact so if you had like acetone or something like that the whole card would be smudged not just the red ink layer so I thought that was pretty cool. Something weird happened 
when the red ink layer was going down on the card. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. There was one more thing in the back you may have caught a glimpse of. This is my original Pokemon 2000 movie ticket. Let me actually take this guy out so you can see. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to read this or not, but you can see like Pokemon Auditorium 01, 2 p.m. Child, 1999, November 14th. Bam, St. Charles. I'm from the St. Louis area, so there you have it. Went to Warrenburg Theaters in St. Charles. Gotta love it, guys. Gotta love it. Gotta hold on to this forever. So, that's basically it, guys. Let me know, do you have a childhood collection that you will never get rid of? What are some of the more sentimental cards in your collection? Do you have, like, a God binder yourself? Or have you considered about making one? I figure people should make one. Now, granted, this binder might be pretty hard to replicate if you have goals similar to mine. But, uh, yeah, just set your heart to it, guys. And if you like this video or like to have future content on these cards or would like to see me grade these cards and want to know what the grades are, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Charizard says goodbye. Peace.